Hello and welcome to Morning Tea, a podcast journey where we delve into anything that has me stirring my cup of thought. I had a few podcast episodes already up, but I decided that I needed to rethink and reshape what this podcast was going to mean to me. I spent a few months more than a few months, like six months, thinking about it. And I've really come up with the conclusion that I want this to be a space where I can share my experiences and thoughts on really anything that comes to light. And I hope that through these podcasts, you guys can see me learn and grow. We can learn and grow together. It's going to be beautiful, guys. So please stick around and support me on this journey of enlightenment. (laughs) I feel like I'm in school and I need to like introduce myself because I'm really nervous and I feel like the only way for me to awkwardly break the ice with you all that don't know me already is for me to introduce myself. (laughs) So... I don't know. My name is T. My real name is Tarina. I am currently living in New Zealand. Um, I was born in the USA in the state of Idaho. For those of you that don't know what Idaho is or where it is, it is in the west by Washington. Oregon. It's really famous for potatoes. I don't know what else. I'm sorry, Idaho. I have failed you. I am a YouTuber slash gaming live streamer on the YouTube platform, which has been quite the ride. I love it. I love it a lot. I'm not a big channel. I think at the time of this recording, I think I've got about 2.3k subscribers. So we we just a little wee thing, but I love it. And I love my solid little community that I have collected. <laughs> collected, that sounds wrong. The solid group of people, the solid community that I just, I, I have so much love for. And they've been so supportive of my channel and I love them. And if you are one of those people that has come from my main channel and you're here to support by listening to this podcast and being here, thank you. I love you. Never leave me because I need you in my life because I need validation. (laughs) Um, If you don't know, my channel is Tarina Choi. It is T-E-R-I-N-A-C-H-O-I. I'm sure there'll be links. You can find my channel. It'll be around. Um, What's really exciting is that not only is it an audio ear candy for you, but I also have a visual aspect. Hello, visual people. If you would like to see what I look like or, you know, you just curious about what mug I'm drinking my tea out of right now, I'm going to tell you that it is a mug that says, yes, queen. And it has the evil queen from Snow White and it's black and it's amazing. So here it is. (laughs) I have quite a few runs lined up over the next few months and it got me really thinking about my running journey because I started running last year after doing like basically no exercise for a really long time and I realized that I have come quite far and because of that I thought this would be a great starting point for my podcast. Also a little announcement if you will if you are wondering what tea I am partaking in because this is the morning tea podcast I am drinking a green tea with strawberry and yes it is as delicious as you think it is my friend Jess 
She got me hooked on it. I love it. It smells amazing. She also found a green tea with raspberry that smells and tastes like heaven. So I'll probably get some of that and we can all listen to me drink it or watch me drink it together. I think that my earliest memories of running were probably when I was in school during like school sports athletics day and the only thing I ever really remember about it is that everybody said I ran awkwardly which isn't wrong I'm very uncoordinated hands up shout out whoop whoop to all of those uncoordinated people out there I could run fast but supposedly I ran really ungracefully very awkwardly that's my running experience. <laughs> I mean, I'm still not coordinated to this day. Uh, the other thing that I would do during athletics is that I would always be not paying attention. Like I would never pay attention during athletics. I would always spend all of my time waving at people and not really paying attention, really daydreaming a lot. I spent a lot of time in my head. And next thing you know, the little like, like the buzzer thing would go off or the gun sh gun shoot shot gun gun shooting gun shot <laughs> what is that the gun would shoot still sounds wrong in my ears the gun would shoot and then off we would go i never really um developed like that runner starting position or anything i'd always just kind of just stand there because i didn't know what was happening and I would run. Eventually, I grew up and over time, I would, uh, over time, I started weeding out anything athletic out of my life. And it became more and more about the arts, less and less about athletics. Stuff happened. Life happened, I guess. And depression set in. Um, eventually I lost the plot, I guess, <laughs> and I went into chaos mode and then the suicidal thoughts kicked in and I think, I think I've really hit rock bottom, I think three times have been like really serious moments where I've really just plummeted downhill m mentally and I've never gotten help for it. I've always just sort of just done it. Also, I apologize if you can hear somebody rolling around in a chair. I'm currently filming in the first floor of a house and upstairs is one of my brother-in-law's and it seems like he's home from work and he's doing a wheelie chair dance. Why? If you have depression, you will know that you become very good at hiding it. And I'm like overly cheerful, like, yeah, I love the world. I love life. I'm so quirky and fun. But like deep down underneath all of that was like, I'm really sad. I don't know why I always feel sad. Everybody's happy around me. Why do I feel this way? And then that just kind of snowballed after years of it really just being like a constant feeling. Eventually it kind of imploded on itself last year and I went into full blown chaos mode, could not mentally cope and stuff just like hit the fan and just the beginning of last year was definitely one of the worst because it just it was not good guys <laughs> it wasn't good and because of that the suicidal thoughts kicked in big time and eventually you know things started to kind of I guess I was ready to seek help because for about 10 years, I never got help for it. I thought that therapy was stupid. I didn't think therapy was for me. I went to therapy once and 
the I went in high school and the guidance counselor was like I think you're fine I think it's just like a puberty thing so I never got the help that I needed and because she said it was a puberty thing I didn't want anything to do with her so that was the first and last time I ever went to therapy so I spent about 10 years really not feeling good about anything or anything to do with life basically and so now last year finally ready for some help I was ready I needed it very very badly so first thing we did was we went to the doctors and that was terrifying I didn't want to go to the doctors and be like yeah I don't want to be alive I I would I think that the world would be a better place if I wasn't here that's the sort of thought process I had that's also my dog my dog is barking this doctors um suggested they put me on antidepressants and I also put me on an iron tablet for my sleep because I wasn't sleeping well and coupling that with therapy now the thing that the doctor recommended he was like you should get some exercise what he didn't realize was that before I'd gone to the doctors I read an article and I've actually pulled up the article um this article is what got me out of the house um so basically it's like when you have depression or anxiety exercise often seems like the last thing you want to do but once you get motivated motivated exercise can make a big difference so basically it's from the mayo clinic and it has to do with the fact that depression and anxiety makes you not want to do anything but you need to actually go out there and do stuff because like release it releases feel good endorphins takes your mind off your worries helps you gain confidence um helps you cope in a healthy way stuff like that so i read through this article by mayo clinic shout out to mayo clinic for the amazing article you guys really helped me through it all and then coupling that with the doctor being like it would be really good if you went and got some exercise and i'm like okay so i went for a walk with some music in my ears and wasn't feeling it but it was good to get outside and i walked to the beach because we live kind of near the beach walked to the beach and it was really interesting because i kind of came back feeling okay like i I didn't feel worse off, I didn't feel amazing, but I was like, yeah, like I feel okay, I got outside. Like I was kind of proud of myself a little bit for getting outside. And then the next day I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go for another walk. So I went for another walk and once again was like, okay, cool, this time I went to the park and like sat on the swings and I was just outside. And that started happening more regularly. And then the walks turned into like, jogs so I was like okay cool I'm gonna go for a jog and then I started doing that like every day and I think about maybe a month or two into me just going for a jog my husband was like yeah I'm I'm signing up for the Rotorua half marathon because I did it a while ago but it's been so long since I've done it and I was like man that sounds really cool and I was like oh but I don't think I could run a half marathon and he was like well you don't have to run a half marathon you know they have a 10k run and I was like huh a 10k run I don't know I guess so and I I did I just signed up for this 10k run didn't know what to expect, didn't know how to feel about it, was still really struggling, so in all honesty, in the back of my mind, I was like, I'm not gonna make it, everybody's gonna laugh at me, was just not very happy, but I like signed up for it anyways, and I was like, okay, cool, this is, this is, this is, this is what I'm gonna do, and so the time rolls up, 
Um, I think I got some new running shoes by then. Or maybe not. I don't remember. But we'd gotten me some new kind of some new gear to run in. And then the day came for the run and I was super, super nervous. Because in my head I was like, you're a failure, you're going to be a failure. You're gonna embarrass yourself, you're gonna like fall over, everyone's gonna laugh at you, everyone's gonna be judging you because you're not athletic and the only time you get out of the house is so that you're not inside of the house dwelling on how miserable you think your life is, basically. And then I did it. I ran, it was really hard. (laughs) For 10Ks, for someone who had only just started exercising again, someone that was finally getting fit again properly, it was so hard. But I got to the finish line and I remember very clearly me running to the finish line and feeling so proud of myself because we came with a group of people who were also running and they were already finished and they were cheering for me and they are like, yeah... Like, you did it. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you. And my husband was waiting for me at the finish line. He did a half marathon and finished before I'd even finished my 10 kilometer run. So, yay you. (laughs) But he was waiting for me at the finish line. Gave me a big hug. And I remember feeling so proud of myself for accomplishing something. Because... You will know that if you have depression, you don't feel like you have any worth. And you just feel a constant sense of sadness about you. So to have a moment where I was like, I really pushed myself and I made it to the finish line was the start of it for me. I was like, wow, I feel really good. I feel really proud of myself. This is amazing. And... And then afterwards, we ate some really good food. <laughs> Fast forward, I think maybe a few months. Maybe like four months. And um, fast forward about four months. And there is a half marathon that my husband is doing. Once again, same group of people. And the anxiety kicks in. I'm just like, I can't do this. Why did I sign up for this? I regretted it. And then the day comes and I feel like I'm going to vomit. And (laughs) I just, I'm, I'm scared. And on top of that, when you arrive, I'm like looking around. All of these people look like runners. They look all look legit in my head when I went to the Road of Ruin Marathon everybody was like there was families there was kids there was you know like all walks of life with the Road to Ruin Marathon and there were so many people so it was really easy for me to just kind of get lost in the sea of people and I felt like I was doing pretty good because I was always with people and my heart, I remember, was just pounding because I looked around and they all look like just runners. Like they all run. Even like these old, old people who are like, you know, like 67 year old, years old. You can just tell they've got like, they're older now, but they've still got runner bodies and they look like they know what they're doing. I suddenly become very nervous because suddenly I'm like, oh no, oh no, I am not. I'm not in any way qualified to be doing this. Like, I can't do it. But I'm like, okay, hey, cool. Like, do you, know, you can do it. You just need to get to the finish line. And everybody around me was like, don't worry about anyone else. It's just you. You just need to get through this. You just need to do it for you. Like, you got this, girl. You're going to do great. You just need to cross the finish line. Don't worry about time. Don't worry about people. It's just you trying to get to the end. And that's all that matters. So... I'm like, okay, cool, yeah, yeah, like, I can do this. The gun goes off. We all set off. I feel like I'm doing good. I'm like, yeah, like, I can do this. I'm doing awesome, feeling pretty good. And 
I think I get to about the 11k mark if I remember correctly. And basically the way it works is we've done all of this run, but part of the map is you you get to one point, but then we loop around and then we kind of head back relatively in the same direction for a while and then we um, turn off and then it ends. So it is still like a, a connected circular track, but it eventually, um, we have to double back at one point. So we're running, 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 and I'm like, okay, cool, like this is all good. I haven't seen anybody for a while, but I'm like, yeah, like that's cool. And eventually like I see people and they're passing me as I'm heading towards the point that we turn off. So it kind of is like a U shape. So I'm seeing people on the other side that have already done the loop that I've done and they're already heading back. So it's just me that needs to hit that U-turn. And so I'm running, running, running. I look back and I think I'd seen some other ladies who were behind me, but they were way behind me. And I'm running and I'm like, okay, cool. I see all these people passing me and I'm like, awesome. That's gonna make me feel really proud of myself once I hit that U-bend, start coming back, and then I'm gonna see like other people and it's gonna make me feel like I'm getting somewhere. I hit the U-bend, turn around, I'm running back. I wasn't passing anybody. And I was like, there must be a massive gap. There's, there must be more people. Guys, there weren't more people. It was at that point, about 11, 12 Ks in, that I realized that I was at the very back of the group. You can imagine what this did to me psychologically. <laughs> I've been running, I've been thinking I was doing good, and now I've just realized that I am in the back of the group. And I crack. I'm a sobbing, heaving mess. And I'm feeling so upset because I now think that I'm not good enough because I'm at the back and if you're at the back that means you're not doing a good job all thoughts any thoughts of me just finishing or it's doesn't matter about time or anything like that completely went out the window because in my mind I was like you suck you're a disappointment so I am I mean it would have looked funny to somebody who's probably driving past or it just looked really pitiful nobody was driving past it was just me on the road I just remember just sobbing I was crying I felt so sad because I just wanted to make myself proud and I wanted to do a good job and in my mind that I wasn't doing a good job at all and because of that I just spent a really long time just crying but I kept telling myself to keep going because I was already over halfway done so at this point it in my mind, there's no point in turning back. There's no point in stopping because I'm already halfway there, but I'm still crying. So I'm out here just trying to make myself stop crying because I see the next water station up ahead. And here's me just like, as I suck it in, suck it in. And I did, I stopped myself crying. And, but the whole time my mental state has just kind of hit the ground. But I just keep telling myself to keep going. I'm like, you're 1K closer, you're almost there. But at this point, I see no one. I don't see anybody in front of me. I don't see anybody behind me. I am the back of the pack. And it sucks. But every time I'd pass uh, someone that was doing the water or something, they're all like, yeah, you can do it. You're doing great. I was like, I can do it. I'm, I was trying, I was really trying. And I remember I got to the last, I think I was at the last, around the last four or five K Mac. And one of the, the family that we came with, 
they had already gone home and picked some things up and they were driving past and they saw me because they were looking out for me. They saw me and they're like, go Shadine, like you can do it. You're almost to the end. And I was like, okay, I can do it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. So I, I got there and this was my first half marathon ever. And I'd only just started exercising. So I really shouldn't have been so hard on myself, but I remember I, I got almost to the finish line and the feeling that I had when I'm running through that last little bit, that's when, you know, the, they've got the flag thing and the finish line. And I remember the guy had a microphone and he was like singing my name and everybody's cheering for me. And I was like, it was all worth it. It was worth it. All of that hard me feeling bad about myself. I mean, I did still feel a little bit bad about myself because I was in the back. And I was like, I, I suck, but I did it. I made it to the end and that's all that matters. So I, and I crossed the finish line and I was like, yeah, I did it. I finished it. I'm so proud of myself. And I remember saying to my husband, like, the first thing I said to him, I was like, I, I came last. I came in the back. Yun-san, I can hear your whistle. And I was like, I'm in the back. I came, I came last. Like, I didn't do good. And my husband's like, hey, like, this was your first half marathon. Like, don't be so hard on yourself. Like, you only just started running literally a few months ago like don't be so hard on yourself and I was talking with the other families and they were like so proud of me for doing it and I found out afterwards from them that they were like you know you shouldn't be so hard on yourself on your time because this marathon is what like serious runners like people that like running is their hobby they use this run as just like a startup or that run isn't really like a community run if that makes sense so it's still open to everybody but it's mostly serious runners that do this run so he's like you you just ran a half marathon with a bunch of people who have been running for years and like this is their thing you should be proud of yourself like you got back before the cutoff I got there in time for prize giving and everything so by the end of it, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess I, um, I did, I did do pretty good. Yeah, there was still that underlying current of me feeling like I could have done better, but overall, I felt so proud of myself because I kept thinking like, I, I could have never done this before and my mind isn't the strongest but I know that I can get there and then maybe next year or even a few years down the line I can keep up with everyone but it was hard <laughs> it was tough I'm, I'm not gonna lie I even this year was like I don't know if I want to do the half marathon for Funga Matai again because the experience of me being in the back really ate away at my mind. It's it. I I have a fear of failure, and I have a fear of everybody judging me because I'm failing, and I have a fear of people being angry at me. There's a lot of negative um, thoughts that go into my mind when it comes to failure of any type, and it's something that I am learning to overcome and to be like you know what you don't need to feel bad about like this or this um because you're doing a good job and you're trying and then I think like a month after that I did the carry carry half marathon which was a totally different experience we went a bigger group of people a bigger group of us went and did it some did I want to say some did five some did 10, some did half. And it was totally different. For one, it was massive. There were so many people at the KK Half Marathon. Um, on top of that, 
I just enjoyed like there were people that were like drumming at certain points of it and there were so many people that were standing outside of their house and cheering and we ran through like this water mist thing to cool us off because by the time the Kerry Kerry one was happening it was about summer for New Zealand that's in November so it was quite hot by then but it was amazing a totally different experience and part of the reason why it was a different experience is because the people that I met while I was running. So it started off running, I think I got about, I want to say about the 5k max, so didn't even make it over halfway. I turned back and I realized, well, here's the, here's, here's why, because I looked forward and all I could see was like a bajillion people in front of me. And I was like, man, there's so many people. And then I made the mistake of turning around. I turned around and there's like nobody behind me. And I was like, where where are all the people? Because I could have sworn that I had started in like the middle. And by the end of, by, by the, about 5Ks in, I was in the back group again. And well, because of that, <laughs> I'm once again crying as I run, but this time I'm trying to be more subtle about it because there's still people around, but I'm very quietly, like tears are coming down my face because I'm like back to square one because I'm, I'm just thinking I'm not good enough. I didn't do good. I'm in the back again. This, this sucks. Why am I doing this? Because everyone else is going to be having a great experience except for me because I'm a loser and I'm a failure and I'm just not good enough and I'm never going to be good enough because I trained up for this one and I'm still not doing well. I met two women who happened to be walking near me and they were like yeah like we love doing this and they're walking and they're happy and they are I don't even really remember how it happened, but somehow I ended up walking with these two women through basically the whole thing. So I would walk, 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 and then we'd run for a little bit, and then we'd kind of power walk for a bit, and then we'd run, and I'm kind of racing with this dude who's in a wheelchair, who like on the uphills ends up way behind me, but as soon as you hit those downhills, he was zooming, he was off, so... It was, it was interesting because suddenly I was having a different experience because I had all of the support, like these women were helping me and suddenly we hit the point where all of, all these people in houses are cheering for us. People have pulled up, like this one guy's playing the bagpipes and it was really, really neat, like totally different experience and everybody was like making me feel like, yeah, like I can keep going just a little bit further and everyone that was running like if they pass someone they're like you're doing an amazing job and everyone was just really trying to help each other get to the end and I felt so uplifted by all of that and I think I got to the last I th- think it was the last three k's and I was starting to plummet again because <laughs> I was getting really tired the main reason was for that was one it is a half marathon and I'm still not quite as fit as I would like to be. The other thing is that it was so hot that day. (laughs) I found out later that there were a lot of people that were getting that last little stretch up to the finish line where like all all the people stand like you know the crowd stands and they cheer you up the lane. Peeps there were a lot of people throwing up because it was so hot. So they were getting to the end, their bodies are like, okay, cool, we're almost at the finish line. And I mean, I, I think I was running up and I really just, I distinctly remember this. I remember getting there, everybody's cheering for me. I'm like, yeah, I can do it. And then it hits me. Exactly the same thing that everybody else was struggling with. I started struggling with and I was like I'm gonna vomit I don't know why but I'm like like I'm gonna vomit I'm gonna vomit and I was like don't vomit you can't do it not in front of everybody <laughs> so 
I remember getting to the finish line, I'm running and I'm like, I think I'm dehydrated. So I start running, run to the finish line. My husband's there. He's so proud of me. He goes to say hi. And I'm like, like (laughs) holding my hand up like, "Mm, yeah, yeah, I did it. I run straight to where they have the Powerade and stuff. And I'm just downing it. I'm just drinking stuff. And then eventually I feel it all subsiding. I just needed like sugar and I needed some water in my body so I'm drinking water whatever I can get my hands on I have a little bit to eat and and eventually the nausea faded um but the care care one was very interesting because I started off feeling bad but by the end of it I felt like I needed to throw up but also I'm very proud of myself for achieving it and I know that they will never listen to this but to the woman who walked with me you guys have no idea how much you guys helped me in that half marathon so to those women thank you you guys gave me a completely new experience and you guys made me be able to cross that finish line through all of this I really learned a few things first thing that I learned was that I'm a lot stronger than I think I am I am I was able to push myself whenever I was mentally down long enough to be able to cross the finish line. I also learned that exercise is good for me. (laughs) Exercise is good for me. Running is actually a lot more fun than I thought it would be. Another thing that I learned is that I need a really solid support group and I have that now but through running I've been able to have people who are like you can do it and they've motivated me and they've really been proud of me and helped me focus not on winning but on just getting to the finish line. This year I am doing a bunch more runs a lot of them are smaller but over the next three months I'm doing four runs so I'm doing one eight point something k run one five k one ten k and I think another ten k I don't know I'm doing a lot of runs this year but it's going to be really fun and I know that I will be pushing myself to better myself and to just be better. One of the big things as well that I've taken from running is it's really forced me to rely on myself because the only thing that's going to get me to the finish line is myself. My legs, my brain are going to push my body to get to the finish line. Like, I can't get them to carry me. Well, I mean, I could get them to carry me. Or I could get them to put me in the ambulance because I'm like, I'm dying. But (laughs) in reality, for me to get from the start line to the finish line, it takes 100% me to get there. And it's the first time, I think in a long time, I've ever really, truly relied on myself. It's great. I mean, you get a medal. (laughs) You get a medal. Sometimes you get like a t-shirt. The Kerry Kerry one was amazing. They had like muffins and um, what else did they have? They had muffins, they had fruit, they had all the drinks. I loved, I loved it. Kerry Kerry Marathon. If you guys live in New Zealand and you want to do a run, I highly recommend the Kerry Kerry one. It was great. It happens in November every year. Unfortunately, this year I'm not going to get to participate. We have two f- lots of friends who are getting married in November so we're not going to be able to do the Kerry Kerry one this year which I'm a little bit sad about but you know the Kerry Kerry marathon it happens every year and it's not every year that we have friends getting married so it will happen eventually I'll do that one again um I do want to end on this running has actually helped me so much I've gained a lot of self-confidence in being able to try new things and I'm learning to try new things all the time because running's turned out to be quite fun and something that I can be really proud of every time I do it. 
despite the fact that I've cried in almost every run I've done. I've only done three, but I've cried in two out of three. So, <laughs> so hopefully this year there'll be no tears. And if they are tears, they're tears of joy because I've beat my personal best. The one thing though is running has been incredibly helpful. I've learned a lot of things and it's helped me grow and it's really helped my depression a lot. But it's not a magic cure. I'm still struggling with mental health issues on the daily, but it's helped a lot. I've grown so much in the year. But what you need is to couple that with therapy, possibly medication, depending on what you are struggling with, and time, which is something that is so, I don't want to say frustrating, but it is so hard because you'll feel impatient with yourself, you'll feel impatient with it. I feel impatient with myself constantly because I want to be better now. I want to be the best version of myself more often. And it's really hard to be that when you're struggling with mental health stuff. I, I'm so excited to make more podcast episodes. I, I don't know. I don't even know if anybody's going to listen to this. But if you are listening to us, thank you for getting this far in the podcast. I'm excited. I'm excited to share my experiences and my journey with you all. It's going to be great. I'm, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. <laughs> this has been Morning Tea Episode 1. Thank you so much for listening. See you next time.